Hi, Internet. I'm Gracie Bordeaux Collier, and you're watching The Bordeaux Show, a mini talk show by, for, and about the furry community. Before we begin, here's Bowser. Our guests tonight are Twitch streamers who have raised thousands of dollars for charities benefiting the trans community. We have a clip from their show here. And you just took it. <laughs> oh no, I just have this now. Whoop. Oh, there we go. Okay, it's fine. It's very precious. Oh, you're going to embarrass them in front of like Hyambas. <laughs> Nothing like a campfire, he says. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Don't get your it! Here with us are Jax and Sleet from Goral's Stream Team. Hi, Gorals. Welcome. Thank you for coming on the show. Hi, I'm Jax. And I'm not. This is my lovely girlfriend, Sleet, Hello. who always does this. <laughs> Hi, thank you for having us. <laughs> it's lovely to be here. Yeah, thank you for coming on. I must say, your set looks delightful. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I made it myself. Oh, oh it's so cozy. You're so talented. All right, so let's get this started. First off. Do you consider yourselves furries? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. How long have you been in the fandom for? Ooh. <laughs> Lois just turned into dust a little bit here. Um, <laughs> so I've been in the fandom since, I think, my first year of high school. Uh, so that would be like 2001, thereabouts. For me, it was a about the same time in my life, maybe about mid high school, which for me would have been about 2003, 2004, mm -hmm. something like that. So uh, quite a while by this point. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to be dating myself here. I graduated high school in 2002. So huh. well, that's Fair understandable. Enough. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm quite a gray muzzle yet, but I'm <laughs> getting there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not going to... I'll retract my comment about turning into dust then, because <laughs> God knows I hate it when <laughs> I hear people say, I'm 24, I'm so old, and I'm just Aww. like... <laughs> okay, who or what first introduced you to the fandom? Oh my goodness. Okay, so uh, this would definitely be high school again. Um, a non-furry, as far as I know, I never really followed up on that, and we drifted apart. Uh, a non-furry friend introduced me to Furcadia, which, uh, for those unfamiliar, is a uh, kind of graphical IRC thing, I guess. Um, second life, but uh, 2D. Uh, I, I'm familiar and... with it, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. But, you know, we've got to appreciate that uh, the young'uns aren't gonna... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh... is, it, is it still around, you know? I feel like it's still around. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, I, oh I my haven't looked at it in a long time myself, yeah. but I hear people bring it up every now and again. Yeah. No, I I remember uh, God, back when it was like, uh, you know, you had your basic selection of animals uh, for uh, your unpaid accounts, and then if you had a paid account, you could be a dragon. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> beautiful and wonderful. And uh, yeah, for Acadia, uh, kind of... Um, I guess put the idea in my head of, oh, there's kind of a community of cool furry animal people out there. And, uh, you know, I bopped around that for a bit. And at some point, I uh, wound up just searching online for uh, Star Fox stuff because I was, I was and still am a huge fan of that series. And I, I stumbled across um, a forum called Outside the Great Fox. And signed up and hung around there for years. I think I only really stopped posting on there because I went to university and just kind of, uh-oh, everything's busy now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that kind of um, snowballed into making a lot of friends inside and outside of that community and just kind of uh, firmly planted me in, uh, in the ground of the furry community. For me, <clears throat> um, I, I was one of the folks who kind of always was a furry without knowing what it really was. When I was a little kid, I would always like draw pictures of my class and me as different animals and 
oh. always think, oh, what if I was a bat? Wouldn't that be cool? Or what if I was a lizard? Wouldn't that be cool? Mm-hmm. Um, Red Wall was a big thing for me when I was growing up. I read all those books like crazy. Oh, I'd go up in my little, my little fort in the backyard and, <laughs> and burn through a Red Wall book. You had a little fort? <laughs> I did, yeah. Oh. Um, and um, I kind of just, as I got older, started searching for stuff related to that, and I just kind of stumbled into it. Um, one of the first real communities I found once I started realizing that this was a thing um, was was um, Fortopia, Fortopia.net, which was an old message board that had an mm-hmm. IRC attached to it. Oh, wow. Um, mm-hmm. That's great. Yeah. I'd found a Redwall muck, I remember. Oh, stuff God, like yeah. that. I don't remember being in there for very long, but so many of those kind of older communities, mm-hmm. I remember just dipping my toes in for, for quite a while. I remember getting into uh, trouble with my mum uh because <laughs> i signed up for furry muck and uh i could only use uh, my parents email account to do it because uh, they had a restriction on um uh, free email accounts from like hotmail and what have you and um i thought okay i can just sign up and delete the message and my folks be none the wiser but it took a while for the message to come in and uh, she was like what's this furry muck and i'm like <laughs> oh no just like, it's just a role-playing board mom don't worry about it <laughs> uh, um next question what are your personas well we are both snow leopards ah. um, and i am a snow leopard tour in particular um and yeah it's it's nice. I like historically, um, I've been uh, various types of feline. Well, various too, I suppose. <laughs> like uh, when I started out on Furcadia, I uh, decided oh, I'm going to be a Scottish wildcat. Yeah, that's going to be great. And um, this was before I'd really done any gender introspection. Uh, so. Uh, like Jack's version one was a dude and Mm -hmm. um, you know over time um, Jack's version one was okay now now a wildcat tour and at some point I forget exactly when I was just like what if snow leopards actually those are those are pretty cool what if snow leopards (laughs) also what if girl (laughs) Mm -hmm. and you would think that that would be where I had some realization about gender and that but no it was just like oh man i'm i'm a girl online and i'm a dude in real life and man i sort of wish i was a girl that probably doesn't mean anything <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna set that aside for a while and not think about it too hard yeah yeah uh, about the same for me i'm a uh, i'm a snow leopard too i went through a lot more f- phases is that the right term a lot more mm. personas i guess when i was mm-hmm. younger mm-hmm. i i had a longer stint as an arctic fox before i changed onto cat hardware but i kept the <laughs> the snowy sort of faculties about the species didn't you have a <laughs> true persona or something? i i think when i was a kid one of the things i wanted to be was a koopa Troopa because oh, oh, i was oh. really into paper mario <laughs> oh. Oh. um no that's super cool yeah so, all right, what have you been working on lately? Oh my goodness, a lot of things. Uh, yeah, <laughs> what have we been working on? Um, well, like, we've been visiting each other uh, for a bit. Uh, like, originally it was just going to be a couple of weeks, and then, um, you know, as uh, the time to fly home approached, um, we were both getting very sad, so we decided... Let's, let's make it another two weeks, mm-hmm. and then currently oh. she lives in Vancouver. Mm-hmm. Um, I live in America on the East Coast. Um, yeah. So, so I've got uh, the Girl Stream Team West Coast Studio, and uh, she's got the Girl Stream Team East Coast Studio. Ah, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, and you know, while we've been here, we've just been kind of enjoying each other's company because you know I. Don't know if you heard about uh, the recent global pandemic. It was in the news a little bit. I yeah, think. I might have caught um, an inkling about that. <laughs> yeah, uh, but that made uh, visiting each other very troublesome. So I think like the last time we 
saw each other was 2019. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Con. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's been a minute. Yeah. Um, Which that's that's a convention I need to go to is Anthrocon. Oh my god, <laughs> absolutely. It. I think there are probably better cons out there nowadays, but Anthrocon just feels special in a way. Yeah, it's it's got a special place for me. Yeah. It was one of the first, you know, well, it was the first con that I went to, yeah. and I've got a lot of good memories with it, so it was always kind of special. Yeah. It, like, as well, I remember being 15 and being like, man, I want to go to Anthrocon. Yeah, oh, that no. was the big the big cheese. Yeah, back yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm in Pennsylvania, so you know, Anthrocon is uh, on the other side of the state, but still uh, semi-local? Perfect. Yeah, lo sure. local enough. Local in U.S. terms, I think. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, geez. So, uh, like, um, I guess, in a way, a uh, girl stream team kind of grew out of um, that being apart. Like, we um, would call each other regularly, um, like, every night. We'd usually play some co-op games, and um, we would kind of make each other laugh an awful lot while we were doing it and eventually we got into the habit of watching uh streamers playing games while we were playing stuff on the side and like um we kind of got to into our head hey we could do that too <laughs> and um it's been a really good thing for us both i think just uh we're about uh what two and a half years into streaming now i think uh, is that right no year no and a half. no a year and a half it'll be two years Time's in, fake. like it's april fine. or something <laughs> yeah but um yeah it's been it's been um quite a journey mm -hmm. i think it's been a lot of fun mm -hmm. um getting into it getting our schedule set up finding all kinds of different stuff to play yeah. we um each june we've had two now we've yeah. had um our pride month streams mm -hmm. those have always been just very special and really fun to put together and it you know feels good to be doing something positive essentially the whole month we'd find games either featuring queer themes or by queer creators mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. a lot of stuff from itch.io which has a lot of great indie developer support mm -hmm. um and you know yeah we, we would share those with folks who would stop by we would raise money um, first year we raised money for Mermaids. Mermaids UK, yeah, because, um, well, uh, they call it Turf Island for a reason, unfortunately. Oh, dear. Um, yeah. Um, and I guess just to go on a little tangent, like, um, I moved from the UK to Canada uh, with a view of us both eventually, you know, moving to Canada. Um, and... Um, when I was in the UK, I'd already uh, put out inquiries about, okay, I want to transition. I want to, you know, look into the transitioning process. I want to get on hormones and all that. Um, I had been living in Canada for a year uh, by the, and more to the point, I had been on hormones uh, and starting transitioning in Canada for about a year by the time the folks in the UK finally got back to me after being on the waiting list for like two or three years. Oh my goodness. So, yeah, it, like raising money for cha trans charities is kind of motivated by, I guess, just wanting a better future for, um, for those that come after us, you know? Yeah. Um, if I may segue for a bit, well, it's not really a segue, <laughs> it's completely pertinent to what we're talking about. Sure, sure. Um, I am, I am also trans. And, um, my transition was not very smooth. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I had a lot of, a lot of gatekeeping, a lot of people Ugh. who just didn't know what they were doing and I had mm -hmm. to wait a pretty long time, but then, and this, so this is a bit of a shout out for me, um, Ooh. is the Mazzoni center in Philadelphia because they, um, they're they're an LGBTQ center in like in the middle of Philadelphia and even though they were very overworked and very busy, they yeah, took absolutely. the time. They took me in, talked to me, I explained my situation, they said, Okay, we're sending you home with a prescription. That is oh, so wonderful. Good. Yeah, it was fantastic. Um mm -hmm. unfortunately it didn't end too well because I did have a stroke. Oh. 
Oh, geez. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, which I'm not entirely sure was really the fault of the hormones so much as it is. Mm -hmm. I have a, I have a defect in my heart that right, led right. to a clock yes. going through. So it might have happened even without the hormones. I don't know. But mm -hmm. as a result, no doctor will prescribe anything to me anymore. Oh my god, I am so sorry. That is really unfortunate. That yeah, it sucks. Yeah. Is what it is, you know, I'm and I hate saying that, but it really is. <laughs> yeah, um, and just to put a button on our charity thing. Yes. Like last year we were doing things just by ourselves. Um and this year uh we decided to raise money for the Transgender Law Center, who are an advocacy group. Um that um you know fight to get uh well fight against uh bad anti-trans laws across the country which mm. yeah kind of you need that now um yeah and uh we teamed up with a few of our friends who will uh shout out probably later uh and um you know as a combined effort uh, between a bunch of queer streamers we uh raised like uh three thousand five hundred dollars for that charity and uh yeah and uh as a result we're starting to think about uh how we can do that again bigger and better uh for 2023 because mm -hmm. uh the only the only way they're gonna uh stop us raising funds for trans folks is uh, to put us in the ground you know <laughs> do you have any hobbies besides your work oh a few yeah um i like to bake um mm. i uh god yeah like I got really, really into baking uh, while I was still living in the UK, and I've had less practice in that since I've moved to Canada, uh, because, um, well, again, global pandemic, yada yada. Um, it's a lot more difficult to bake a giant tray of cookies or a yummy cake when it's like, I am going to have to eat this whole thing by myself. <laughs> Like, as much as I would want to, it's just, man, I wish I could take this to work and be like, okay, this is your problem now, co-workers, <laughs> enjoy. Um, and, oh god, um, I, I am going to have to dust off my baking trays because as one of the rewards, uh, the, the donation incentives from uh, Queers Fight Transphobia uh, this year, um, our various communities came together and raised... Is that the two thousand dollar milestone? I think it was the two thousand dollar milestone. I, th I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It raised two thousand dollars to make me uh, bake monster energy bread. Which... Oh my goodness! Yeah. So I'm excited? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Question mark? Concerned? Concerned? <laughs> uh, the chal I look forward to the challenge of making that. Not a disaster. And I look forward to the suffering. <laughs> Sleet, do you have any other hobbies? Yeah, I suppose I do. I <clears throat> my my job takes up a lot of my time, but um, I kind of find myself um, dipping into just kind of general world building a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it's not always with a real goal in mind. It's just something that I tend to like to do. I like to. I'll, I'll find a random science fact about mm. something, space maybe, or something, and then I'll spend all day looking into things. So Idle like, forces that one time. Yeah, so I can, you know, like, how, how how would trade winds work? How would how would a, you know, life on a tightly locked planet develop? Mm -hmm. I, I like doing that stuff, just Oof. sort of as its own creative exercise. I, I'd started getting a little bit into um, tabletop gaming over the last couple of years mm -hmm. just to um, have something to do with local friends when we weren't really able to hang out mm -hmm. so much because of, um, you know, the end of the world. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, funneling into it into that a little bit. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, we already kind of, kind of went over this, but do you have any other special interests? <laughs> uh, we have one note uh, in our notes here for this, and that is, uh, open Transport Tycoon Deluxe. <laughs> it, it has been eating our lives lately. It's, it's true. It's... We still like in our, our off time to to play games together. Oh, it's a yeah. good way to to um, 
spend time when we're apart. So absolutely, um, we still do that a lot, and that's that's been our our big obsession lately. Is uh, yeah, trains, trains. Yeah, <laughs> oh, just, that's great. It's a game where you build a big transport network. It's um, God, it was released originally like nineteen ninety five or something. Oh like my that. goodness, so, ninety four, ninety five. Yeah, it, it's one of a small group of games that has just develop this really dedicated fan community around it that's uh devoted to uh maintaining and upgrading this really niche game that um a lot of people enjoyed like the other one i can think of is uh roller coaster tycoon mm -hmm. that one okay. um also got a open rct uh, version and that's also I really wish good. I could attribute this quote, but I, I saw somewhere somebody talking about those sorts of things where they the communities will make these open source remakes of these these old games that have such a huge cult following and mm -hmm. a lot of passion behind it and compare it to you see a lot of videos of people who are like repairing junk, like they'll find an old butcher's knife in a river or something mm -hmm. and they'll clean all the rust off of it and they compare it to that sort of a restoration to yeah. to keep these would it be fair to say historical <laughs> artifacts yeah, alive? Historical, and I, I think as well, like there's just something about these games that nothing that came before or since has quite scratched the same itch, and also just the fact that there's been this amount of community involvement in them for so long means that um, it's so well refined. It, it's re refined. Hmm. Anything that kind of replicated a similar thing with maybe better graphics or anything is going to still fall a little bit short because yeah. it's not quite the same thing it's not quite got all the same weird levels of detail that uh you know the attention for for two decades or close to two decades from a dedicated community of fans can add in and there's just something really special about seeing something that i played a bunch as a child and never really understood because I had a tiny little baby brain um, <laughs> and uh, being able to interact with that and being like, yeah, I remember this. I really enjoyed this and I can still have a lot of fun with this because it's just completely different from so many things out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last question. Are there any shout outs mm -hmm. you'd like to make? Absolutely. So um, our friends from uh, Queer Fight Transphobia, uh, we had a few fellow streamers uh, participate in that. Uh, I'd like to shout out um, my brain for completely shutting down for a moment there. Awesome. <laughs> uh, Sleep, would you like to uh, try that while I reboot? Uh, our sort of sister streamers. Cobalt Tune, Laura and Maddie, mm -hmm. they're wonderful. We we kind of got into the whole streaming thing close to the same time. God, they are they are so good. I think we lift each other up very much because Absolutely. like every now and then they'll make an improvement on their channel or do something cool and special, and that'll like light a fire under us to do something a little bit better, a little bit cooler, and it's just. This really nice positive feedback loop, and the two of them are just so sweet and lovely, and uh, they put in so much effort uh, to help Queers Fight Transphobia work, and we can't thank them enough. Um, also would like to shout out uh, Team Retrofox, which is uh, comprised of a few folks. I think the main cast right now is uh, Iggy, uh, Jay, and Spex. Um, they also did a lot of help with uh, Queers Fight Transphobia. They're a wonderful bunch of streamers. Uh, we'd like to shout out our friend uh, Nairi Bakalian, uh, otherwise known as Riverside Wings. Uh, she is um, a wonderful historian and uh, she writes some beautiful um, historical fiction that um, is an absolute delight to read. Uh, she's a really wonderful person and uh, Attending her streams is always fun because uh, she'll usually give some historical or cultural perspective to whatever she's playing. Like, she's very specialized in, uh, like, uh, Japanese history and, um, you know, she'll be playing Katamari and talking about, okay, well, 
you know the these things that we're rolling up right now that's this thing and that has this significance and okay there's actually a little joke inherent in the layout of these objects that would completely bypass english speakers because it, just an absolute font of knowledge and uh like absolutely adores cross-lingual puns which <laughs> is just the way to my heart <laughs> and um finally i would like to shout out uh my sister uh fior uh who is a wonderful poet i'm gonna need to get here uh um she she doesn't stream but uh, she does uh, a lot of poetry i'll have to send it over her uh, social links uh, but yeah definitely recommend uh, folks check all those people out because they are all absolutely wonderful and uh entertaining and just mm -hmm. cool in their own right for sure mm -hmm. okay well thank you both so much this was this has been a pleasure thank you so much for having us yeah, it's been lovely it's been delightful all right, that's it. Jack Sleet, thank you both again for coming on the show, and thank you, viewers, for tuning in. Until next time, this has been The Bordeaux Show. Bye! Bye!